The war is now one year old, and you know, if you watch this channel, that a lot of people have done a lot of stupid things so far, but a few of them really stand out, so I've made my own personal top 10 list. I know everybody and his brother does top 10 lists, but you know, what the hell. This show lives 100 years in the past, so we'll just say we did it first. Okay, here we go. Top 11 stupidest moves of the war during its first year. I'm Indy Nidell. Welcome to The Great War. Yes, top 11. This list goes to 11. So much stupidity, it's hard to leave someone out. So without fanfare or further ado, I'll get right down to business. In early 1915, Ottoman troops under command of German Colonel Friedrich Kress von Kressenstein, great name, had a seemingly clever plan. They would cross the Sinai Desert and take the Suez Canal from the British. This would cripple Britain's troop and supply movements, but you'd need artillery and surprise to do it, and there were no roads. So you'd have to lug the artillery through the desert. Now, how do you do that? Ha ha. German engineers had secretly dug wells in advance so that the desert crossing could succeed. But when they attacked on February 3rd, they were mowed down by Indian machine gunners backed by Egyptian artillery. But how? How did the enemy know they were coming? Well, they forgot that this was not 1900, not 1905, not 1910, this was 1915. And by 1915, the British had reconnaissance airplanes, so they knew exactly when and where the Ottomans were coming and inflicted 10 times the casualties they took and kept the canal in British hands for good. So, number 11, the Ottoman Empire forget the airplane exists and fail at the Suez Canal. Number 10, Enver Pasha lives in a fantasy world and leads the Ottoman Imperial Army to total destruction at the Battle of Sarakamish. Now this happened a month before Suez and it was the first last time Enver Pasha commanded in the field, though he remained Ottoman Minister of War. His campaign was a disaster on an almost unimaginable scale, with some estimates claiming that only 10% of the army, which including non-combatants numbered like 150,000, made it back to their starting positions after three weeks of marching in battle. Most of them were not even killed by the Russian enemy, but froze to death since they were given summer uniforms, and it was as cold as minus 30 degrees. Many were also subsisting on olives. Enver blamed the Armenians for his defeat instead of himself, and we can see where that led. Number nine, Neuve Chapelle. The British completely break through the German lines and rout the Germans and then just sit there without advancing and without sending in reserves because their communications suck. This was the best chance they'd had to beat the Germans and they blew it. The gaping hole in the lines was opened in the morning and the reserves weren't sent in until eight hours later. Eight hours. Think what they could have done in that time. Taken miles of land, tens of thousands of disorganized German prisoners, and the German railway and communication lines. This showcased how completely backward the British field communications were. Number eight. While the Russians have the Germans on the retreat after the Battle of Gumbinen, the Germans find a note on a dead Russian officer detailing plans for the whole Russian offensive. Armed with that knowledge, the Germans turn around and destroy the Russian army at the Battle of Tannenberg, taking 100,000 prisoners and causing 50,000 casualties. So, the guy who was carrying around that note? Pretty stupid. Number seven, the French army still think it's 1814, and at the beginning of the war, they march out with sabers and brightly colored uniforms in a big mass against German machine guns. All told, on August 22nd, 1914, the French lost 27,000 killed. Not wounded, not prisoners, killed. This was the greatest death toll for one country for one day of the entire war. In just August 1914, France lost 75,000 killed and over 200,000 prisoners before they adopted the tactics of modern war. Number six, Austrian General Oskar Potiorek screws up the third invasion of Serbia. Of all the bad generals of the war, Potiorek was quite possibly the very worst. You can look him up in our old episodes to see just how bad, but his complete refusal to understand the weapons and the tactics of the 20th century led not only to his three failed invasions of Serbia, but eventually to disasters in the third at Kolubara and Belgrade, which completely humiliated the supposedly mighty Imperial Army, which even with the massive advantage in numbers, failed yet again to defeat little Serbia and ran home with its tail between its legs, 300,000 men fewer. The world fell in love with underdog Serbia and sent money, supplies, and troops, and Italy leaned more and more toward joining the Allies. 
Number five stupid move of the year. Winston Churchill hatches his brilliant plan to break through the Dardanelles, take Constantinople, and knock the Turks out of the war. Now, we all know this was a completely predictable disaster that cost hundreds of thousands of lives. Predictable in that it had been accurately predicted by not one, not two, but three British sea lords, including Winston Churchill himself, within the preceding 10 years. But Churchill's ego really couldn't stand to see the army get all the glory in the war, and he had to get his navy in the fight. One man. Number four is also one man, and it might be the man you've all been waiting for. Insert applause noise here, okay? It might be the man you've all been waiting for. Number four, Austrian Army Chief of Staff, Konrad von Hotzendorf launches not one, not two, but three doomed winter offensives against the Russians in the Carpathian Mountains. The real goal of these was to free the garrison of over 100,000 men who were under siege at the fortress of Przemysl. But the offensives were so unplanned, underplanned, poorly planned, whatever you want to call it, that soldiers went off in minus 30 degree snowy mountains in cardboard soled shoes. Hundreds of thousands froze to death. Many wounded in no man's land were even eaten by wolves. And the total cost in men for these debacles was over 800,000 of the cream of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Number three is also a single man stupidity. Number three, Gavrilo Princip shoots the one man, Franz Ferdinand, who really could help Serbia achieve its dreams dooming that country. It's true, while Franz Ferdinand was possibly the most horrible human being in all of Europe, if not the world, he was also a rabid patriot. And even though he detested the Slavic peoples, he believed that the dual empire of Austria-Hungary should become a triple one with the Slavs as the third part. And he was heir to the throne. And the empire was 84 years old. And while Konrad von Hotzendorf had tried to start war like 30 times in the two years before the war actually began, it was Franz Ferdinand who was his counterweight and prevented it. And Princip shot him. See, that was just plain stupid. Number two was more of a group effort. After Russia had thoroughly kicked Austria's butt in the winter offensives and was only prevented from vomiting forth onto the Hungarian plain by some timely German reinforcements, the Russian high command repeatedly ignored intelligence that the Germans were building a force like none seen before with over 2,000 heavy guns. That was stupid because when the hammer fell on May the 1st and the Gorlitsa Tarnov offensive kicked off, the Russians lost eight months of gain in a couple of weeks. Lost Lemberg, lost Przemysl, lost Galicia, and now, three months later, are still in retreat with Warsaw, heck, all of Poland, and even Riga and Kovno in danger. The retreat would not only eventually number over a million casualties, but it would result in several million refugees. Never ignore your intelligence, Russia. Stupid. But even that was not the single stupidest thing anyone in the war did this past year. And the single stupidest thing was actually done by one single man. Can you guess? Okay, I'll count to five. Five, four, three, Two, one. Drum roll, please. And the number one stupidest thing done in the first year of the war. Austro-Hungarian Emperor Franz Joseph declares war on Serbia. Yep, I mean, I, I don't think I even need to explain that. So that's my top 11. Okay, thanks for all the support this past year, and whether you agree with my list or have some other stupid moves which you think were stupider than the ones I chose, tell us in the comments below. And if you haven't already, check us out on Facebook for all the cool stuff our social media guy Florian puts up. And in the meantime, click here to see how Potiorek screwed up at Belgrade. See you next time.